All right, everybody, this is 2.3 operations in the number system. Um, this is our updated notes. If you have not that, don't have that yet, that's on the drive. Okay. Um, we're going to start by doing operations with the, the irrational number, so like roots. What happens if we multiply roots? So here's an example of the square root of 5 times the square root of 3. The cool thing about it is... It is the same as if you didn't have the roots, okay? So 5, it's the same as the square root of 5 times 3, which is the square root of 15, all right? So if you have two roots, we just multiply what's inside those roots, or those, uh, which is called the radican. If I can spell that right, I probably can't, so I'm not going to write that, okay? So that's the radican. Um, here, again, the same sort of thing. We're doing the square root of 6 times the square root of 10, well, that's the square root of 60. Okay, if that's the case, um, where perhaps we can simplify, then we should do that. And that's what we did in our last lesson, is we did like these factor trees, like 2 and 30, 2 and 15, and like 3 and 5 with circle groups. Again, we take those out. The reason why is because we're doing the square root of 2 times 2, or the square root of 4 which is just 2. So we can take that out, and then what's not in a group is that 3 and 5, but that's being multiplied, so we would do 15. All right? So still we want to be able to simplify if needed. If we have a number that's in front of that root, um, it's, it's basically the same thing as, I don't know, like if this was a 3, we multiply the things that are outside of the roots, and we multiply the things that are inside the roots. So just kind of like what we did before in our last lesson. So we'd have two square roots of 5 times 15, or we could write that as 75, okay? And then we'll do our factor tree. We could do 5 and 15, 5 and 3, and then the group comes out. So just like we did in our last lesson, we would have that 2 already, and then we'd have that 5 that we took out, and then we have what's left is just the 3, so 10 square roots of 3. All right, so that is multiplying rational numbers, irrational, sorry, and we're going to use that when we, when we do this, all right? So if we have a root that's inside the denominator, um, we want to get rid of that, all right? Um, to do that, we, it's called rationalize the denominator. So rationalize, you know, uh, ratio, uh, rational, okay, that's something that has a decimal that has a pattern or is a fraction, can be written as a fraction, but an irrational number, like the square root of 3, we don't want, want, want to have. So we're going to rationalize it, become, make that denominator become rational. All right, and how we do that is that we multiply, we take, we look at that, what's in the bottom, that root, and we will multiply top and bottom by it, okay? And if you notice that the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, well, that's just 1. So we're not really changing the fraction, we're just uh, making it look different. Kind of like when we simplify fractions, or um, I guess you could expand fractions, make them bigger. Okay, they're still the same, but I mean their proportion is the same. It's just written a little different. Okay, so that's what we'll do, and then we'll we know what to do if we multiply two times the square root of three. Well, that's just two square roots of three. All right, and then the square root of three times the square root of three. Well, that's the square root of nine. But wait, we know that the square root of nine is three. And now we don't have the, the root in the bottom. It's rationalized. This is a rational number, okay? All right, so basically we will multiply top and bottom by the root that was in the denominator. Let's do a couple more examples. Or you can pause and give this a try. So here we have the square root of 5. We want to get rid of that square root. So we will multiply the square root of 5 over the square root of 5 which again, that's just one. And then we multiply straight across. So four square roots of five over the square root of 25, which is 
five on the bottom. Okay, so it's not too bad. The only other thing that you're going to need to look at is maybe simplifying the fraction when it's done. So like here, that is four fifths. That can't be simplified, but maybe if it was like four sixths, then we would want to simplify it. We're, we only look at um, the rational part, okay? We will always leave this, the, what's in the root, the irrational part, uh, by itself. Okay, so let's look at B. I did have some students in my other class that said, well, maybe we could do this. Do we just do this whole thing? Oops, two. And you can. It's just that you're going to need to simplify even further. We only need to get rid of this root, so we might as well just multiply top and bottom by that root. Okay? So now we have 7 square roots of 2 over 3 square roots of 4. Again, that 2 times 2 is 4. And then we can simplify that even further because the square root of 4 is 2. So we'll get 7 square roots of 2 over 3 times 2 is 6. Okay. All right. Fraction can't be simplified, so we'll just go on. C, we have a negative, but the thing is, is that it's not going to change anything. It's still going to end up being negative at the end. So again, we will multiply top and bottom by the square root of 6. We'll get negative 2 square roots of 6 over the square root of 36. And the square root of 36 is 6. Okay, so here what I was talking about is if we can, we should simplify our, um, our rational fraction. So the 2 over 6 is the same as 1 over 3. So we'll end up having negative 1 square roots of 6 over 3. And we don't really need to have that 1, so we could leave it like that. Okay? All right. So here's just a couple other examples. You're welcome to give those a try if you'd like. Like here, this one just simplifies even further and just gives you 8 halves or 4. So things like that are even more simplified, okay? All right, next we have operations with rational and irrational numbers. So I just filled this in already, and we'll just talk about it. So we want to figure out what happens if we add two rational numbers, like, for example, 2 plus 3, which is 5. So here we have two rational numbers. Q, again, is like our abbreviated... It's our letter for rational numbers, so q plus q is equal to q. So no matter what you do with rational numbers, if you add them, you'll always have a rational answer. Same with multiplication. 2 times 3, those are both two rational numbers, and we end up getting a rational answer of 6. All right, what happens if we have a rational and an irrational? So that's our next one, is rational versus irrational. So here we have 3, which is rational, and pi is irrational. If you add those together, we end up getting 6.1415 dot, 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 okay? And it's still irrational. You could look at more decimals. You'd have no pattern, and it would just keep going. So irrational. And then multiplication with a rational and an irrational, we end up getting irrational. So that's a simple example. 1 is a rational number and the square root of 2 is irrational. So multiply that together, and you get square root of 2. So obviously that's still irrational. And that's for all cases um, that if we add two or add a rational and an irrational or multiply a rational and an irrational, then we will always have an irrational, except for one case. But I'm not going to even say that because I think we're good for now. Okay? All right, last is irrational versus irrational. So this one depends on how the equation is, or the expression is set up. So for example, if we had the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2, well, that's just two square roots of 2, okay? And that's still irrational. Or you could do pi, um, pi plus pi would be another example, pi plus pi, or 2 pi plus pi, okay? Would still end up getting 
something that is irrational. So my pen, I think, just died. Can we have Caden Page to the front office? There we go. Caden Page. All right, Caden Page. All right, so, but then there's also cases where it could give you a, a rational answer. And that only happens when we're using its, uh, like, additive inverse. So basically, it's opposite using a negative sign. So like the negative square root of 3 plus the square root of 3, those cancel out and we get 0. Or like negative pi plus pi, that gives you 0. So if you use those kind of those opposites, then they cancel out and you get a rational number, which 0 is a rational number. Okay? And then with multiplication, we could do something like pi plus or times pi. That's going to, I don't know what that is, 9 point something, I don't know. Um, or the square root of 2 times the square root of 3, which is the square root of 6. So no matter what, or in these cases, not, not no matter what, but in these cases, our answer is irrational. So we could come up with an example for that. Or there's also some examples where if you multiply them, then they end up giving us a rational answer. Like the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. Well, that's the square root of 4, oops, sorry, right, which is equal to 2. Um, another example could be something like pi times 1 over pi. Those are both irrational numbers, but when you, when you multiply, you get pi over pi, which is just 1. So those are some examples. You will have something like this on your homework, review, and test. Um, be prepared to come up with some examples. Like, for example, I could ask you, what happens if you add a rational and a rational? Or um, give me an example of when an irrational and a, or an ir two irrationals end up giving us a rational answer or something like that could be something that you'd need to be prepared for, okay? All right, and then here's just a couple examples. Here I'm just going to ask you, what are their answers? Are they rational or irrational? Okay, so one way you could do that is you could just plug these things into your calculator and look at the decimal. Okay. But rather than that, I'm just going to talk about what type of numbers are these. So this square root of 12 is not a perfect square, so it's going to give us irrational plus a rational. And we talked about that. No matter what, if you add those together, you end up getting an irrational number, okay? Or for B, this is rational plus a negative rational number, and that would give you a rational. So again, two rationals will always give us another rational number. D is in that um, irrational times an irrational. So here we would need to check and, and see. Again, you could use your calculator. Um, but since nothing is being canceled out, all right, um, then we know that this is going to give us irrational. And then the last one, you would think, well, these are irrational, right? They're not perfect squares, but if we multiply those together, we end up getting the square root of 100, which is 10. So we'll have negative 10 would be our answer, which is rational, okay? So there's another example of two irrationals that give you a rational answer. All right, if you have any questions on that, please let me know. Next we're gonna talk about is operations with complex numbers. So again, a complex number is something that has a real part and an imaginary part. And remember, everything is complex, so even six is a complex number, it's just the imaginary part is zero. Or if we had like two i, that's complex, it's just that the real part is zero. All right, so we're going to figure out what happens if we add, subtract, and multiply complex numbers. In order to add or subtract complex numbers, we will, use, we will combine like terms, okay? Um, just like we did with polynomials. One thing that I made a mistake here is this should be an I. I actually fixed it last year, and then I changed it, and it stayed back. So this is an I. Okay, so combine like terms, again, reals and reals are like terms, so negative 3 and 11, that would give us 8, 
and then we have the imaginaries, and those are like terms. So negative 9 minus 7 would give us negative 16i. And that's all there is to it, okay? Here's another example. What do we got to do before we try and combine like terms? Yes, Mr. Warren, you have to distribute the negative. Great. So we would want to distribute, give negative 3 and a positive 6i. And then we'll just combine like terms. So real, real gives you negative 4. And then, um, then we'll combine these together. Noah, could you come back in a little bit? What? Can you come back in a little bit? Yeah. Thanks. All right, sorry about that. And then we'll combine those together. That would give us um, plus 3i. Okay. Sorry, I got a little distracted. All right, so that's basically it for those. And when we do multiplication, this is a little, a little different at the very end. But besides that, it's the same as what we did with polynomials. So let's do something like this. Here we have like a, almost like a monomial times a binomial. Again, we're going to distribute. So we get 12i and 6i squared. Okay? But we're doing complex numbers, and we haven't had any complex numbers that would have like i squareds. So, hmm, let's see. If i is equal to the square root of negative 1, what does i squared have to be? So if we squared both sides, what happens if we square a square root? Well, those just cancel, and we just end up getting a negative 1. So both of these are something that you're going to probably want to have memorized on your test. Okay? i is the square root of a negative 1, and i squared is negative 1. Okay? So if that's the case, then what could we do with the square root of, or i squared? Well, we just figured out that i squared is the same as a negative 1. So we will just multiply 6 by negative 1, and that gives you negative 6 plus 12i. That's it. So that's all that's really new is just whenever you have an i squared, switch it to a negative 1. All right. Um, let's do a couple more together. I only did that one and this one in class. So we'll do that. And then if you want to watch the rest, you're welcome to. So here this is a binomial or like a, I guess it's not a binomial because it's, um, but it is a complex with has a real and and it's like, a, it's like a binomial, okay? But we'll distribute. We get negative 36. Here we get negative 12i. Here we get negative 48i. And then here we would end up getting um, negative 16i squared. Okay? Hopefully I didn't miss anything up there. Okay, again, we can combine these like terms. That gives us a negative 60i. Okay. And then the last thing that we know is that i squared is the same as a negative. So we could write a negative 1 here. Some people will just cross that out and change that sign because that's what's going to happen, right? Um, both are good and I'll understand what you're doing. Okay, so now we'll combine like terms. We have a negative 36 plus 16 gives you negative 20, and then we just have our negative 60i. So all of these problems, you'll never have more than two terms, basically a real part and an imaginary part. If you have a third, then you probably have an i squared, or you didn't combine like terms didn't combine all the reals and all the imaginaries, okay? So that's about it. Oh, wait, here's a good one. What happens if we have something like a binomial squared or a complex number squared? Again, we do not distribute the exponent. We have to write it twice. So please, please do that. Oops. And then we could solve it that way, okay? So... You can be done if you're done. Um, nothing else is really new there. So I'm going to do a couple more examples together. Otherwise, you can just get worked on your homework, okay? 
So here we get 16. Here we get negative 8i and another negative 8i. And then a positive 4i squared. Okay, this is, maybe I'll do a different color. Okay, here we have negative 16i and here we have 16. Here, this is going to give us a negative 1, which gives us a negative 4. So, we'll combine like terms. Looks like we have 12 minus 16i. All right. Here's one more. We'll do one more. Okay. We'll have one like this on your homework, perhaps on a reviewer test. Okay. We'll use the distributive property. Okay, we'll distribute that negative 5i to everything that's in that parenthesis. So we already have this 3 plus 9i, and then we'll do minus 10i, and then a negative times a negative is a positive, positive 5i squared. Combine like terms, that looks like we'd have a negative 1i, and then here again, that is a negative 1, which will give us a negative 5. And combine like terms, negative 2 minus i or 1i. Either way would be fine. All right. Well, good luck. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'd love to help. We'll see ya.